This is CNN Tonight. I'm Don Lemon, 1 a.m. here on the East Coast, live with breaking news. Democrat Connor Lamb declaring victory in the special congressional race in Pennsylvania. But this race is really just too close to call until every single vote is counted. We expect to get results from Washington County's absentee ballots sometime tonight. So continue to follow. It is a nail biter. I want to get right to CNN's Jason Carroll. He's at Lamb headquarters and back with me, Van Jones and Steve Cortez. Okay, so uh, Jason, you first. Talk to me about this close race, this nail biter. But minutes ago, you're at at Lamb headquarters. He came out, he declared victory. I mean, we expect we may get more outstanding votes even tonight. But he's confident. Well, the campaign, well, Don, the campaign feels confident that they have the votes, that the math is in their favor. They waited uh, and debated for some time before finally coming out and Connor Lamb declaring victory. Uh, he did his part to talk about the nature of his campaign called it a grassroots campaign. He thanked the labor community, which uh, the campaign really has felt all along, has really given them a boost throughout this uh, campaign season. And he also talked about the need uh, for the political climate to change. He talked about that, saying people are tired of the shouting on TV. He said, quote, especially in politics, he said, our job is to attack the problems, not each other. The crowd obviously loved it. It's been a nail biter all night long in the beginning, uh, Connor Lamb enjoyed what some thought was a comfortable lead and throughout the night and into the early morning, we saw that lead erode. Uh, throughout the uh, night though, the campaign, as I've been checking in with them from point to point, felt fairly confident throughout the evening that the numbers were gonna weigh in their favor. That's why by the end of the night and early into this morning, uh, Connor Lamb has once again come out and declared victory. Rick Saccone, for his part, says this race is not over. They believe once all those final absentee ballots are counted, things will end up weighing in the Saccone camp, in the Saccone corner. But as for now, uh, Connor Lamb saying the time now has come for Democrats to regain their voice. They feel as though they've been able to do some of that tonight. Don. Jason Carroll at Lamb headquarters. Van Jones. Lamb basically ran, though, as a Republican light. There's not much daylight between policies, on, even though one is a Democrat and one is a Republican. What is the lesson for Democrats here? I think Democrats have to um, uh, release a certain kind of ideological stranglehold uh, on people who want to run in districts that are not like the districts um, you know, in New York and California. Uh, New York and California, you know, I've got uh, uh, roots in both places, love them to death. But I also grew up in the rural South in a red state. And you just can't have the same kind of litmus tests in Birmingham that you have in Berkeley. And you've got to be willing uh, to back and to support candidates who can actually win uh, in parts of the country. Listen, it's very, this country is so big, we have three different time zones. It's as big as a continent. You've got to let people be able to raise money and, and run and get support, even if they don't agree with every single part of the liberal agenda. And I tell you what. Uh, that is going to happen. People keep thinking that in some of these districts you're going to be able to run, you know, uh, you know, left wing, you know, folks like, you know, uh, you know, the, the, some of the people who uh, you know, you know, they love to beat up on. But here's the reality. People are smart locally and you're going to have a lot of smart local Democrats who are going to learn from this and they're going to put the right people forward. The Republicans are going to not going to have it as easy this time because yeah. people know they we, we're going to put up a big fight. Four different time zones, if you, I mean, if you, it, it's that three. You said three. There's four. And if you count Hawaii, there's five. So, you know, it is, it is a very big country. Let's see, I, I'm going to, listen, I'm going to mark that because I do want to talk about, at some point with my panel here in the studio, about this litmus test that Democrats have had for such a long time for their candidates. And maybe, maybe things will change when it comes to this. Let's see. So, what do you think this race came down to? Was it a referendum on Trump or was it more than just that? You know, no, I, you know, I think to quote Tip O'Neill, all politics, I think, is local. And this was a local race with a very good candidate in Connor Lamb and I think a lackluster candidate, to be honest, in Saccone. I think the, the lesson to try to draw comparisons to Trump is that Saccone is not Trump, uh, to his discredit, and, and Lamb, to his credit, uh, is not Hillary Clinton. He's much, much better than Hillary Clinton. That's why there's a very different dynamic here. But I would also say this, on a national basis, and I agree with Van, I think the Democratic Party is probably getting smarter. It needs to, by the way. I mean, frankly, uh, it's 
it's been put on its heels for the better part of a decade, lost, for instance, a thousand state legislature seats under the tenure of Barack Obama, I think by relying too much on hard left policy. So it seems to me like the party is starting to find its footing and is going to tolerate more ideological diversity. People like Connor Lamb, that's smart. But in terms of connecting it to Trump, when you're now talking about a national race within the Democratic Party, within a national primary, I don't think there's any way somebody like Connor Lamb, uh, somebody of that ilk, can win the nomination, for instance, for 2020 for the presidency. So there, I believe, you are going to have an Elizabeth Warren uh, or a Kamala Harris or somebody who is hard left taking on the president for re-election in 2020. And I think the results will be like 2016. Do you think, Van, that they're going to see more Democrats running as, as Republican lights and, and from, uh, from Listen, now on? Uh, we're we're calling them Republican lights, but basically what, you, what we're actually talking about is people who fit their district. Um, you know, it, that's something I think is important for us. Or to moderate. So I think you are going to. We have to have more more moderate people. Uh, you know, you, you uh, right now the energy in both parties is on the wings. The right wing, the populist wing of the Republican Party has most of the energy. The left wing of our party has most of the energy. But that doesn't mean that in every district, everywhere, those candidates are going to be able to be successful. And so you're going to, you're going to have that. But you know, when you say a Kamala Harris is hard left, I mean, that's, the, that's part of what, what you're going to see also. I think you're going to have some people who, Democrat, who Republicans want to write off because maybe they're from California. Uh, Kamala Harris is going to have a great deal of appeal. She's a former prosecutor. Uh, she's no, she's no uh, uh, shrinking violet or, or ultra lefty at all. We've got some candidates, but I think what we, uh, what you're talking about 2020. But let's talk about 2018. In 2018, you've got a Democratic Party that wants to win and is going to want to make sure that there is a counterbalance to Donald Trump uh, in the Congress. Uh, Congress has been delinquent in holding him accountable, and people are going to tell you what. These tweets every day and go and being depressed and stressed out every day by Donald Trump tends to focus the mind. And you're going to have a much smarter Democratic Party in 2018 than you had 2016. And focus the ballot yeah, too. I, focus the ballot. Listen, I got to run. Thank you both. I appreciate it. I okay. want to bring back Mark Preston now, uh, Bakari Sellers, Amanda Carpenter, and Scott Jennings. So um, listen, Bakari didn't get to speak last time. So what do you think, Bakari? <laughs> I think Bakari was very happy today. No, listen, go ahead. Let, let me let me just. Kind of, let me let me go around. I have a lot of thoughts. I want to start, I want to start first with with Mark Preston earlier today. He 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 regurgitated a comment that was made by Barack Obama about clinging to your guns and your Bibles right. and that. But but he failed to acknowledge the fact that Barack Obama won Pennsylvania twice. And as Amanda pointed out in the break, he actually won union households as well. The reason I bring that up is because it goes to a deeper point. The fact that what Connor Lamb did was and and I hate to refute not not just you, Don, but also uh, uh, Van and. Uh, the other gentleman, but there wasn't anything. There wasn't anything re Republican light. Uh, in fact, what Connor Lamb did was he ran to the base and the heartbeat of what the Democratic Party was. I mean, this is somebody who ran on protecting the ACA and health care for all individuals. This is somebody who talked about the fundamental inequalities of the tax bill that was just passed. But even more importantly, he went out there and harnessed the energy amongst union households, which many people believe to be the backbone of the Democratic Party. And so that was my point: is that he, what the Democratic, would you say, used to be? Well, and what we, and, and it's not and union workers and blue collar workers. And, that's what I meant. But is well, union Barack workers Obama, just and, coming back home to Barack, Democrats after and, Hillary and failed Barack, to correct, perform Correct, and that's what we're saying. We, yeah. we, it's not as if they've been gone for mm -hmm. for two decades. I mean, they just left. They just they didn't we, like we just Hillary. had a hiccup. And they didn't vote in the same numbers that they voted for Barack Obama. The last thing, and let me just point this out, because uh, uh, what, what is his name again, Steve? What, Steve, Steve Cortez. Because, what Steve, Steve said, Steve said that we have a bunch of old social justice warriors, and we're moving away from, from what Connor Lamb is. The fact is this. The Democratic Party has to be both. Because what Doug Jones was, mm -hmm. was a social justice worker. What Connor Lamb is, he's somebody who's very pro-union, going out there, and they, they can win in their respect. But you know what both Doug Jones and Connor Lamb were? They weren't anti-Trump zealots. You didn't see them out lighting their hair on fire about Trump. I think they intuitively knew the anti-Trump momentum was there on the ground, and right. they didn't have to push the envelope. They didn't have to talk about it. Yeah, they, they've been they very smart policy. and right. disciplined about that. And while the unions have been on the ground organizing, which, you know, we have to talk about what is happening with the unions, what happened in West Virginia with the teacher strike. They're getting organized in places like Oklahoma, Kentucky, red states where unions have a big presence. Republicans better be on the lookout. I do have to say this before I let you get in. I mean, listen, with Doug Jones, 
could win or whatever, but we have to remember there was a Roy Moore factor to this. Sure, but he didn't case. overplay it and make it about yeah. Trump. He was very smart in disciplines, and I think Democrats yeah. are getting smart on that. Go ahead. You know what I think is interesting about Mark bringing up the clinging to your guns and religion? That's exactly what Connor Lamb did. Literally, he was clinging to an AR-15 in the first ad that he ran in this race. So he, wa he was actually running the kind of race that Republicans are being accused of running by Barack Obama. Barack Obama didn't win this district. McCain won it. Romney won it, as has been pointed out by all these Democrat strategists. And as, uh, and as, uh, uh, as a special election, Lamb was not subjected to having to run in a Democratic primary. He was chosen at a party level, but he can't run an ad shooting an AR-15 and win a Democratic primary. Why not? Jason Kander did. Jason Kander won a statewide That's a statewide race. This is in a world the where the resistance is dominating. The is, I'm saying this situation set up for Lamb, but it would have been different and he's harder a military, had it been a primary. First of, all, first of all, he's a military hero. So your advice so, to Democrat candidates to shoot guns in Democrat primaries? If you're a military hero and you know how to handle a gun, okay. right. that's, I mean, what, this, this is, the problem with this is that Republicans are going to find every single excuse. I mean, you sat here earlier today and said Sarcone was a bad candidate. Compared to what? Yes, I mean, what, what is he a bad candidate? What did well, he not listen, do I, right? I just well, agree that I what think he was a fine candidate. Okay. Okay. He's boring. Okay. There's three reasons. But that's okay. not a death knell to be boring. And he time was out. safe. He was time out. Time out. He, time out. he did not, raise, he he did not raise money. You want to know why that's a red herring? Because Republicans, mm -hmm. not just his campaign, but special interest group, they outspent Connor Lamb. So however much money he raised, the Republican Party spent more money in this race than the Democratic Party. They have a lot of make, money. Make, make all these I've never dollars. asserted otherwise, but Lamb candidate spent to candidate. Almost two million. But candidate no. to candidate Saccone was far lazier. He got outworked by Connor Lamb. I'm not disputing that. I mean but, that's a fact. Like I agree with Bakari on this. I don't think Rick Saccone was the worst candidate. If he was boring, well guess what? There's a ton of Republican the candidates local... who are boring that don't have the benefit of being in a district with twenty points. What if you're a boring Republican in a district? That's plus two for Trump. Plus to five, one. plus ten. You're dead. The local, the local people will tell you of the three people seeking the nomination, he was by far the worst of the three. So compared to what? Compared to the other people but who he wanted was to run down the line, a, a pretty reliable Republican. Take away from Lamb. Away from Lamb. You know, you know, from Lamb. They, they ran a good you have, race. You, you're like this great. is a this is a circular firing squad because just Please a minute no. ago you were talking about the fact. <laughs> Stop the gun talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were talking about you were talking about the fact that a good Democrat couldn't win a primary, and now you're saying a good Republican couldn't even win his own primary in eight. But, like wasn't a primary. It was chosen at the district. Well, That's what I'm saying. They made a bad choice. What I want, what I, this is what I, this, this is a prototypical discussion that's going to happen in the D.C. bubble. And I want this to continue to happen amongst Republicans in Washington, D.C. Because what we're seeing, and something that Van highlighted. Mobile, by the way. Well, I get you. But, 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 but what <laughs> we're seeing. We're not seeing what I'm <laughs> Can I make. <laughs> Cardi, right, so go ahead. Call call this, is I'm really a seller. this is an oh, R plus 11. This is an R plus 11 <laughs> district. All right. Paul Ryan is a R4. Nunez is a R6. Mm -hmm. These guys are going to be in trouble. So keep saying it's all about this candidate or that candidate. Say what you want to say, but every there are 119 Republicans tonight that should not sleep easily. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, hey, uh, let me just bring it. Let me cut off together. Martin. I'm just trying. <laughs> let me be. Let me be. <laughs> Bacari, what do you think Mark well, thinks? <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. No, I actually think that we're all saying the same thing. I mean, yeah. quite yeah. frankly, I think we're all on the same page. The bottom line is, is that going back to the, the cling to the guns and religion, because you know that would not let you have the last word. <laughs> <laughs> the idea is, though, is that the Democratic Party has pushed away uh, folks from the Midwest mm -hmm. and, 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 and from Middle America, and they have pushed away against folks who actually do believe in the Second Amendment or, or, or the rights that go along with that. What we're seeing here, though, is that Connor Lamb mm -hmm. uh, is somebody who pushed back against his party, but didn't push back against his whole party, because he is a Democrat. He's a Bob Casey Democrat. Bob Casey, for all our viewers out there who probably don't remember who he is, he was a pro-life governor from Pennsylvania right. and got on the oh, wrong God. side of the liberal. Oh, so, so let me ask you this, then, because this, this whole thing, when I said Democrats have a litmus test for every single candidate, you have to do this, you have to do that. Every single Republican in the country, and I'm generalizing a little bit, was against Donald Trump. The moment he got the nomination, everybody fell in line. What? And on the Democratic side, well, Hillary Clinton doesn't believe in this. She doesn't do that. She doesn't do that. Bernie people were at the convention when she won the nomination screaming Bernie, and Democrats, were just, they just sat there and let it so happen. A litmus test is a fairly, fairly new phenomenon in the Democratic Party. It's something that we're trying to push back on. There are many of us that don't want this checklist of things you have to do. I mean, to your point and to your point earlier, I literally took my concealed weapons permit class with Nikki Haley. 
We, we took our oh. class together, okay? You didn't, you, you failed though, right? But my point is that we, we cannot have a litmus test. We cannot have a litmus test as Democrats. What we fall into... How do you say that to people who are marching, all the resistance to the people because who are marching the, because up, what the you, millions of people marching what, what up you there? Saw, what you saw in the, mar in, in the women's march and what you're seeing across the country is people coming together on various issues, whether or not it's common sense gun safety regulations, which you hear Democrats talking about, or, or reproductive rights, or what's going on on our federal benches. There are a collection of issues, yeah. and we have that energy. Democrats are not one thing. We are Connor Lamb. We are, we are uh, uh, Joe Manchin. We are Bakari Sellers. We are uh, everybody and everybody in between. Okay, I'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, there was she, Hillary Clinton faced Sometimes bigger headwinds from members of her own party than we she lost. faced from Republicans. Hopefully we learned that lesson. There you go. That's, what, that's all I'm saying. Okay, stick around, everyone. When we come right back, our breaking news on Pennsylvania's special congressional race, Democrat Connor Lamb declaring victory, but until every vote is counted, this race is still too close to call. Here's our breaking news. Pennsylvania's special congressional election. Democrat Connor Lamb declares victory, but the race is too close to call until every single vote is counted. About 1,400 votes remain, and we are waiting some uh, to be reported on tonight. President Trump stumped for Republican Rick Saccone this past weekend. Watch this. Go out on Tuesday and just vote like crazy. you got to get out there. The world is watching. This, I hate to put this pressure on you, Rick. They're all watching. Because I won this district, like, by 22 points. I really feel strongly about Rick Saccone. And I know him. I feel strongly about him. He's an incredible guy. Number one, and I don't know that this is important, but to me it is, he's a very fine human being. He's a good person. He's really a good person. Personally, I like Rick Saccone. I think he's handsome. I want to bring in senior political commentator Simone Sanders and Jack Kings, anyone? Here. Jack, the president uh, and vice president, the family, they campaigned for Saccone over the weekend, and yet, here we are. You know, they, they went in there, they tried their best to prop him up. I actually was talking to a consultant, Axiom Strategies, earlier tonight, and they said pre-Trump's visit, he was down by six points. So the president g did give him a bump, not enough. There's no question about it that the party out of power is a little bit more motivated. Um, I saw a lot of candidates like this in 2006, guys like John Bocheri and Glenn Nye, I think Simone was on the Hill when they came in in that class of 200, 2006, the Democrats took over. They were really um, uh, blue dog Democrats, um, just just like Tonight, Connor Lamb. Um, <laughs> just, but Jack. just like him, I mean, look at him, he's pro-gun, he's personally pro-life, he's pro-tariffs, he's pro-tax cut, He's pro coal. He's he's really out of step with the Democrat Party. But that's not and, true. And, so let me. Well, excuse excuse me, Simone, but those are all his positions. So. But I'm gonna. But it, but it's not true her, that he's out of step with the Democratic Party. It's it's anti coal. No one is anti tax oh, cuts when it's tax. No one is anti tax oh, cuts when it's not tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans, which is what this, with what this tax bill is. A tax bill that's not popular, by the way, which is why Republicans, particularly in, in this Pennsylvania district, started running away from the tax bill. This is what I think folks are missing tonight, Don. The Democratic Party is a party of a number of factions that have organized under one umbrella of a, a shared set of values, if you will. Not necessarily a shared set of, of issues, because if you get five Democrats in a room, they might tell you they stand for five different things. The lesson from this is that, look, it's not an either or, as Bakari was saying, it's a we can do it all. And so we have to run candidates um, that are authentic to their message in, in, in spaces and places that connect with the community. And so you can be pro-choice, you can be pro-working people, you have to understand the factions in your district. And I but think is, is that Lamb the party you want to be? It, has, it wasn't, it, it's not the party but, that you had been, especially 2016. But here's, but here's the thing, though. The Democratic Party is always shifting and changing. I'll remind you, 
have to pass the Civil Rights Act, okay? So the question on the table is, what will the Democratic Party look like a year from now, two years from now, even five to ten years from now? And the, and the answer to that question lies in which factions rise up. And, and what lessons are learned? Because if there's a lesson learned from this and all the other special elections that we have been covering uh, throughout the, the past year or so is that uh, Democrats have to sort of rejigger a little bit and figure out where they go. And but, maybe they have to run candidates that are more conservative. Go ahead, Jack. I, but, but I'm just saying, and, and I, you know, I, Simone can disagree, but he is out of step with the uh, Democrat majority in Washington, D.C. He's pro-gun. He's personally pro-choice. He's pro-tax cut, meaning the Trump tax cut. And he's pro-tariff, meaning the Trump tariff. So these are not sustainable positions for a member of the Democrat Party in the Democrat Congress today. And Don, we've seen it before, because in 2006, many moderate Democrats, just like Connor Lamb, were elected, and they were all tossed out because um, they couldn't identify with either party. Some of them got beat in primaries, and a lot of them got beat in general elections, because that's not what the leaders that they elected stood for when they got to Washington, D.C. And he, is he going to consistently stand for Tim Ryan over Nancy Pelosi? He, he may for a while. I mean, Gene Taylor from Mississippi, who Simone knows, uh, he did that for many, many years. But eventually it catches him. Okay, and so, so Simone. Look, I, I, I think that... Democrats should be excited across the country tonight. This means that the, the blue wave is real. I think we saw in Alabama that the blue wave is real, but I want to caution folks. There is no blue wave in this country without black and brown people, without working people. So you have to understand who are the folks in this district. And where national Democrats mess up, where the DTRIP and the DSCC and all these, and the DGA, when they drop in and they do not take stock of what the climate is on the ground, that okay. is when we mess up. We took okay. stock of the climate, and I think we're going to do well come this fall. So, uh, listen, Dana Bash threw out uh, a number earlier tonight that's significant. She said 114 House districts that are, that are even more competitive than tonight. More competitive. That's got to scare Republican colleagues on Capitol Hill, Jack. There, there's no question about it. And, and I'm saying I think this was a very significant victory for the Democrat Party. I, I would say that the Democrats keep bringing up um, Alabama. They're absolutely wrong on that. Not only was How it... So? Uh, uh, not, not only was it all of, about the good judge down there being a terribly flawed candidate, but that the attorney general race down there and the tiff between the governor and Luther Strange, that had so much to do with it. But, Simone, so what I would give you is you've won these state legislative races. I think it's 36 or 37. 39. And so, so it, I mean, that's to me where the story is. Jack, let me but, ask you something. So he won by 20 points. And then tonight, uh, you know, I guess, well, almost two years later, you can say, it's not quite, a year and a half later, he possibly, the Republican candidate possibly loses. That doesn't scare you? Uh, no, I, it does scare me. There, there's no question that, that our party is going to have to do what Connor Lamb does, is sometimes triangulate mm -hmm. between where the White House is and their own uh, provincial politics. You just have to do that. Um, Democrats and Republicans do it um, in their own party all the time where they have to have to triangulate and they have to get on the ground and they have to knock on every single door. But they also... Well, while you're answering this, so I want you to take a look. I want to put this graphic up, Jack, and I'm going to let you finish here. This is a graphic. It's from the New York Times. The blue arrows show where voters trended from Republican to Democrat since 2016. Um, and if you, hopefully you can see air, air. That's a lot of blue arrows, man. It, it really is, and you know, it shows a, a, a fickleness of the voters right now that philosophically they're out testing both parties to find out what works for them, and they're adjusting it. And so, uh, candidates have to be very, very attuned to their own grassroots uh, sentiments. And one of the things that we did learn, both parties in this election, is polling is not as reliable as it used to be. Uh, part of it is because people are on cell phones, but the other part is. Um, people who were on the ground there said, you know, they couldn't figure out which way this election was going to go. Yeah. Hey, so uh, Simone, stand by because we're going to take a break. I'm going to bring you back on the other side. Stick around. We come back much more in our breaking news. Democrat Connor Lamb declares victory in the Pennsylvania special congressional race, but the absentee votes still being counted right now. Trusted name in news. 
Our breaking news this morning, Democrat Connor Lamb declares victory in Pennsylvania's special congressional election. The race is just too close to call until all the votes are counted. But it should have been a slam dunk for Republicans. Back with me now, Mark Preston, Bakari Sellers, Amanda Carpenter, Scott Jennings, Simone Sanders, and Jack Kingston. You wanted to rebut something Jack was talking about, Simone? I don't, you know what? It's so late. I don't even remember what Jack said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, look, I just want to say this. I think I want to reiterate that Connor Lamb did not run Republican like he did run as a Democrat. And I think what this means for Democrats in 2018 is that you can you can run good races with good candidates.